Good morning everybody, hello. I'm just um, doing lots of random clicking at the moment because my Facebook is being, what a surprise, it's being a bit naughty. Um, good morning, hello Hannah. <laughs> well, why, why not have a bit of cake outside? What cake did you go for? Just trying to get rid of a sign across the screen so I can actually read the comments because I do not want to share the thing. Hello, Rosemary. Hello, Sue. Hi, Jean. Hi, Kathy. Oh, you flatterer. You can come again. I hope you're doing all right. I hope you're all well and happy, even though the weather's not great. Thunderstorms today with you, aren't we? This really does not want to disappear off my screen. So if I if I miss a comment, I'm sorry. It's because I've got a banner that Facebook now put across all of the live feeds at my end to tell me to share it to loads of groups. But the trouble is, I've tried sharing it previously, and um, I can't read the comments of the of the areas that I've shared. So anyway, hello. Um, we're going to look at acrylics. And we're going to look at how to create layers of foliage. So where, wherever you are in the world, whatever you're watch, whenever you're watching, um, hopefully you'll find this interesting. This demo. Um, I'm only going to use uh, three colours plus black and white. So cadmium red, ultramarine, lemon yellow, black and white. So that's a uh, warm blue, warm red, cool yellow. Um, if you're into that, or a purple blue, orange red, green yellow, um, with black and white. And it is, it's always lovely to have um, all of you here with me. It's all right, I've just had another thing pop up. because I'm trying to get the bird sung on. And I thought I'd do the whole picture from scratch. I was going to pre-paint the landscape and then do the trees. But I thought it'd be quite interesting for you to see how um, just a limited palette will allow me to get distance and depth um, with trees and foliage um, which I think is just as important right we've got some bird song now that's good you're seeing a fleeting thing are you um, Sue oh you're going to get soaked too. no you won't get soaked you'll be fine anyway I'll be using, there's my acrylics, let me move my thingy out of the way and hopefully I won't need that. Let me get some paint on, so don't forget today is a demo, it is not a um, uh, a paint along lesson, we're doing our paint along, oh gosh there's 31 of you, hello, 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 lovely to have you, I am honoured to have your company today and it is all the more special because you are here with me. Um, the end of the month we've got our paint along haven't we, um, watercolour little boy on the beach in wellies right let me crack on with this basic landscape and then we can talk about the trees which is what you're here for I'm going to use my three quarter of inch brush wet it a little bit scoop up a nice dollop of white so i am using a limited palette for the whole painting and i'm going to work quite quickly so my brush is damp rather than wet and i'm using far more paint than um, I would in a different medium possibly right I'm going to keep my brush white hello Jill oh you're in tall bay now lovely bit of ultramarine on the corner not much a few blobs like that and then we're going to blend it in You might be alright, Sue. You might just be a bit behind. I don't know how it works on everybody else's computer. So I've got two Sues today. So this is Sue Walker I'm talking to. Because I can see your comments. Let's scoop up a bit more white and a bit of blue. Crisscross motion. But you can always watch it back, Sue, if... Uh, if you don't get me live I'm just as thrilling in catch up as I am um, live I've got the window open I've got the fan on 
going to have a bit of a hazy background. It's canvas paper I'm working on today. My brush is covered in paint and now most of my canvas is. I'll lightly go left to right. So we've got nice soft hazy it's those lazy, hazy, crazy days of summer. The days of thunderstorms. Oh, I didn't really... You know what? Hello. Hello, Sue. You're back. Welcome back. Val from Ipswich. Hello. What's the weather there? Um, so I'm going to go with a bit of white on the corner of my brush. And I'm going to tap away to create sort of clouds. I'm not going to be very... Um, precious about it just going to shove it on to be honest because you're here for trees you're not here for a landscape I'd like to say you're here for my company but you know just a hint of clouds so I'm using the edge of the brush if you notice look at the shape of that now the way I've stabbed um, these brushes are I've been using these for a year. There are six ninety nine for a pack of ten uh, brushes, and um, it's they're, they're starting to get a little bit abused. But I have got to say, as well as a bit of brush cleaner, I was using um, hand sanitizer the other day, and I've managed to revive several brushes. Um, so that's good. Right, I've got my sky in. Da -da 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 -da. Do you know what, Hannah? If I shout loud enough, you wouldn't even need to to watch live, apart from see the screen. You could um, you could just hear me because I've got the window open. In fact, I could throw something out the window at you, but I wouldn't want it to land in your cake. Right, I'm going to clean that brush. I want to do um, a bit of a distant distant hill right at the back. So for that, I'll go with a small brush. <clears throat> ultramarine tiny bit of lemon and some white because things further away are bluer and things closer to us are more warm and ready brownish something like that that will give us a good idea now I'm going to go with a bit more yellow, a bit more blue, a little bit of white in there. Now don't forget the white, I use titanium white, and that um, bleaches out colour, so use it sparingly, but it does make it feel a little bit more opaque. Some of you may have seen my uh, art history video this morning, full of useful information from Barrington Bockingford. Um, so this is just lemon yellow, ultramarine, <coughs> and a tiny bit of white. Probably about a 50-50 mix here of um, colour. And I'm not going to keep it like this. I am going to do some stuff to it. But I want to try and get it all done within the 45 minutes. Oh, I can also now absolutely categorically vouch. Mandy. Thanks. You can definitely come again. Stop with the flattery. Stop. I'm gonna keep it going. Okay. The, um, I did Ancestry DNA um, earlier this year and I'm linked to tens of thousands of people all over the world. I have no idea how I'm related to some of them and you start thinking, oh gosh, does it is it really valid? Well, thankfully, two cousins from either side of my family have actually now done the DNA test and one, one messaged me this morning on there. Um, it's my, my cousin's daughter. And uh, we're actually related. Surprise, surprise. We're related. Um, so it works. It works. And my, and my sister's son has done it. And I'm related to him. So I, I can vouch for the, uh, the validity of the DNA. 
what I might do is I might just put a little bit more lemon over the top. I don't want this, you see, to take precedent over the foliage um, bit. But I think it's important that we have a whole scene. Gosh, is that the 40 of you now? Hello. Hello. Bonjour, Daniel. Ça va? That's as far as it goes with my black country French. Okay. So we're just blocking in. Blocking in colour. Um, I want to go with a slightly darker bluey green. So I'm going to add a little bit of cadmium red to that for this section. Don't add too much red to the green because you'll end up with brown. So that's lemon yellow, a lot of ultramarine and a small amount of cadmium red. And yes, I have painted over everything that I have drawn. But uh, it'll be fine. Everything's fine. It'll all be all right. Right, I'm gonna use. I'm gonna mix a bit more of this actually, because I want to do some distant, distant trees right on that back. Same brush. Oh, Barrington, he is hilarious, isn't he? So these are just little dots and dabs across the very far back just to give us an idea of foliage. If you wanted to create possibly a field system, you could bring it further down with some slightly bigger lines. Make it all ad hoc. We're going to cover a lot of this up. We've got, I want a group of trees here and a group of trees here. But I'm going to carry on regardless. So yeah, if I do get any customers, I am going to have to nip down and serve um it, it's quite funny really i, I did an experiment because yes last saturday was the day that i would normally have taught a master class because the end of the month um but i didn't and the shop was very quiet i had hardly any customers during the duration of what would have been the class um yet i wonder if i'll get any customers today while i'm doing this Some, something like that will work, I think. Yeah, right. I'm not going to go on any more than that. But we'll do some glazes. I am going to make a bit of a brown out of green and cadmium red. And I'm just going to plop that over one of these fields, maybe two. So this just gives it a nice feel of things going on maybe I'll have a blue one and a, a slightly more vibrant yellow one there so it gives me that idea that we've got stuff going on <clears throat> and in fact let me just make my darker green up again so it's all to do with your darks I, I start with my darks and build up and if you're fairly new to acrylics that's what you may find a bit counterintuitive to something like watercolors so I'm just stippling this on don't have too much water because um, it will make it go transparent and we don't want transparent. So 
something like that. I've got a nip downstairs, so hopefully I won't be very long. Be back in one second. Please stay. I'm back like a whippet. That's me. Hello, Liddy. Ah, oh, Samantha, it's Jackie that's the tea bag um, handler. Oh, you see, but you've got to have that diagonal line in. You see, that's that's where it works to the advantage. Now, this isn't dry. But what I want to do is just quickly... How am I doing for time? 20 past. Oh, we're fine. Right, let me get the hairdryer on this. Da -da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. So for this next section... Ah, oh, Sandra. Hello, Sandra. Um, Lovely to have you with us. For this next section... I need it to be dry. So what I'm going to do is, and this is where, uh, uh, again, people struggle. I want to do a misty glaze of white. So it's runny white. And because I'm using a very limited palette, this misty glaze of white look pushes that back. So it means I can use the same colours again over the top. Hello, Diane. It's alright, I've just had to nip out to serve a customer anyway. Helps me get my pandemic um, spare tyre off. I had a singing gig last Sunday and it was the first time I'd got into my tuxedo. Um, 
in real life because sneak sneak thing those of you that follow my live music shows um when i'm wearing my tuxedo i've actually got jogging bottoms on below the camera uh, because i couldn't get in my tuxedo because i'd put weight on so um i could only get in the top half but i had to make sure i was slender enough to get into the bottom half to go to a care home and sing right too much information okay i'm going to go with a bit more white a bit more yellow sorry and a little bit of into that dark green and a tiny bit of white and I'm just going to tap and that's going to give me a bit of uh, grass so you can see we've got depth in the scene and we haven't even painted any trees I should be using a bigger brush for this or a fan brush or something else but um, time is on the essence and I know you're all very understanding when I have to go and serve and I'm very grateful for that it's just that we're not that busy to actually have staff on weekends so I have to spread myself a little bit thinner but as I say the step count is good and the customer the lovely customer is very apologetic for disturbing it so she apologizes to you all right so we've got a bit of stipply grass I'll probably put another coat on this when it dries. So you can see by using the same colour, and don't forget that under colour was that dark green that we'd got there. Now, I'm going to keep that colour on, and I'm going to continue with this dark green. Now we've put the glaze on. Now we've glazed over. Some of you might have done that for real. Uh, ultramarine, a little bit of lemon little bit of cad red and I'm going to do my first distant back of trees back bank of trees no f no uh, no trunks so I'm stippling away and yeah I know I've covered up a lot of that back oh Kathy thank you good morning Carolyn Hello, Elizabeth. Um, oh, which bit could be done in a, in watercolour? Um, because working from back to light. Oh no, it's white. It's a white sky. Um, it's white on my screen. Um, it's white and blue. Um, I. If I was doing this in watercolour, I'd have to do it in reverse. So I'd have to put my light greens down first. And then um, <clears throat> the darks. So maybe I'll do one in watercolour at some point to give you a better idea of, of what's going on. Right, so while that's going to dry, <clears throat> I'm going to get my big brush out, the one I did for the sky. Squeeze out any extra excess. Extress. That's what I was saying. Extress. Extra or excess water and go into my black like my soul so if you notice I paint all of the trees all of the dark tones in one go Hello, Jilly. Flick up a little bit at the bottom just to give a little bit of excitement to the, the scene. Then I'm going to go in with the black. Stab it on the, on the palette, on the all expenses played paper plate palette. And I'm going to tap away. Do you know what? I think I want to do slightly bigger... bigger blobs and thank you very much for those stars Kathy. it all helps apparently I signed up for a challenge to see how many stars I could get uh, but I forgot to actually tell anybody that I was doing it so I didn't get any or very many I was supposed to get 10,000 stars or something this in July in June 
<laughs> and I forgot because it's all new to me right so you can see here I've got a bit of stipply trees but we don't know what they are what's in front what's behind on either of these right let me clean my brush how am I doing? Nearly half past. Can I get this looking like a decent landscape by quarter to ten to? Ten to a push because it was five minutes in and I've nipped down. Right, little thin brush, black. Hello, Sally. You've got sun in, um, in Gloucestershire. How very dare you? We've got grey clouds, but no rain. And I'm going to use this now to paint a few uh, branches and twigs. Boradaran, should he? Come on, Beth. Right, so I've got uh, a few uh, from Rhonda. Excellent, that's beautiful. See, I'm bilingual as well. I'm a man of many hidden shallows. <laughs> right, we'll just let that dry for a minute. It is, I honestly, I am so grateful that so many of you actually bothered to tune in. <laughs> it could be... Um, Easily not done. Right, I'm gonna get the hairdryer on this for a sec. So if you were thinking of um Welsh black country I have I, I found out though I have got nine percent Welsh DNA nine percent the rest of me is very um, Anglo-Saxon I think but uh, yeah if you're thinking of doing acrylics and you've never done it before honestly black white ultramarine lemon yellow cadmium red a really good basic start because as you can see we've done all of this just with that so far and I like having the black underneath because it gives us that little bit of substance for stippling. It allows it allows a bit more of a stipple to go on and a bit of texture. Right, so I'm going to go with this brush. I'm just going to dab off any excess moisture. And we're going to look at how to do um, hazel. Thank you. First time watching and one of your demos great so far wonderful thank you very much um it's lovely to have your company and thank you for joining me today and hopefully uh, you'll find it enjoyable and learning and relaxing at the same time which is good right we're going to look at layers so we need to look at at the moment it's just one big mass of trees here same here but we'll look at that in a minute what's in front what's behind how's it going to work well let's let's have a look so we're going to go with lemon yellow i'm going to actually throw in a little bit of black now black nowadays generally is not a natural color and it's made with blue and all sorts of stuff um so when it mixes with lemon yellow you get the lovely olive green if i throw in a tiny little bit of uh, ultramarine in there i need to make sure my brush is manky and it's uh, well stabbed will do I think um, and where should we have the light from light from the left so I'm just gonna tap a little bit do you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna actually make this a little bit more vibrant than I would uh, normally because I want it to stand out more so we want to stipple and you want to leave some of that dark 
and then I'm going to tap with my finger in towards the Andiolch. Oh, thank you. I think somebody sent me some stars. Thank you. Right. And because I've tapped that in, thank you, April, you're lovely. I'm going to actually now do this again. And can you see that tree now looks in front of that one? But what if, what if I want this tree in front of that one? I'm going to do the same thing like that. And now that tree is in front of the other. So if you're working in watercolour, you'd have to do it the opposite way around. You'd have to do your light greens first then into your dark so I will have to look at I'll look at what demos I'm doing to see if I can um, use some of this method in watercolors so I'm just gonna just do a few little random blobs like that you want you want quite a dark base for some of this and um, obviously I'm using just the same color for everything but I could bring that in front you see and maybe I've got another little shrubby thing in front there. So that's given me a really vague basis of, um, of foliage and layers. And I'll probably use a little bit of this just on the, the grass as well. So we've got the idea of some light. These won't have cast shadows because the light's going across to the left. To the right, jump up and down and do your knees. What was Aga do? Right. Something like that. How does that look? I think that looks okay, doesn't it? Now, as we do this tree, I want these these trees, I want to give us the same feeling. So I'm going to go in with a bit more yellow, tiny bit of white, not too much, because I want to build up layers here. A little bit of black. Or ultramarine, doesn't really matter. Um, if I can, I will um, post this. I will... Um, download it sometimes it doesn't allow me to download my own videos um, I will download it and pop it on our free learning platform on our website okay now I want this tree to be in front of all of the others um, which should be okay I just want to tap a little so when I tap for, for foliage I'm not being all neolithic and, and stabbing like mad i'm being quite delicate i'm almost tickling because i want that dark to stay through <laughs> oh bless you gene thank you i did i did do a barry glossary of terminology um a few months ago i think that uh, that pulled together some of my uh, my uh, terminology, but extress uh, yeah extress paint is is a new one that I've I've just created today. I think I'm going to have to down that one and go with a smaller one. You don't want your brush too wet. Um, it may surprise you that I'm exactly the same when I'm singing. I was never trained in professionalism. So we have a good laugh then as well. Right. A little bit of stipple here. But what I'm doing is I'm being... I'm creating negative shape. 
and I know that will instill fear in many of you but what I want to do look is make it so that tree is in front and when you're painting foliage you want to create clusters of greenery and those clusters of greenery create branches now as a child of the 80s myself yes i am that youthful i just look old um blame my father's dna for that the eye bags were passed down from family members um I used to love watching the Wombles, the animation, the, the model animation of the Wombles and those trees. And I think Bob the Builder was the same when my nephews enjoyed watching it. They had like the base colour and then they had an extra little bit of foliage brought out forward there and maybe another bit there and then a little, little clump there. And it makes a big difference if you can create in clumps. If you look out the window wherever you are now and you've got trees, you'll see definite areas of clump clumpage and uh, areas of dark it's the darks that we're retaining here and the clumpage is very important to get that realism layers because when we talk about layers of foliage we're not only just talking about lots of trees we're also talking about within one tree you're going to have lots of layers because each cluster each clump of, of leaves are all vying for sunlight so they're reaching out as far as they can which means that the successful branch will cast a shadow on the least successful branch so you'll get clumps and you really want to make sure your clumps look good and um, so a bit of a stab here what am i how am i for time all right for time is this making any sense i i do hope so I apologise if not. But it's what you get with me, I'm afraid. So I'm stippling less and lighter. Towards the darker side. And I'm, I'm exaggerating my clumps. So what did you do this morning? Oh, I watched Barry exaggerating his clumps. Oh, I've got the window open today. You'll hear the the Christian guitar singer. He's changed his songs now. He's now he's now. Um, thank you, Valerie. He's now singing the whole world. He's got the whole world in his hands. It was a different one before, but he comes down and he marches down the street with his guitar and a smile on his face. They love him in the cafe. Can you see the depth that we've created? But that we, we're going to we're going to go one further with this. I'm just going to pop that down, and we'll stick some grass. That's me being posh because it's grass where I'm from. But we'll stick some grass. And again, lightly stipple. You want to keep the dark. The darks are so important for distance and depth. So this is all the same colour. For now. A fan brush would work beautifully for this. Um, and it will give you more clumps of grass. Absolutely, you know, little hillocks, tussocks of grass. Um, if you're working in oils, you could do the black underpainting in acrylics and then do your oils on top. Because I know we've got a few oily people um, joining with us today so you couldn't do it this way around in watercolor because the watercolor is not opaque um, the only way you could do it in watercolor is if you actually use gouache which isn't watercolor so therefore you're not using watercolor you're using gouache um, 
say watercolours would be a different way. So at the moment it's all looking very much the same. All the greens are the same green. Which sometimes you can get like that. I remember when I was 15, just, just two years ago, <laughs> um, my deputy head mistress of high school commissioned me to paint the view from her house which is a beautiful rolling hills and woodland she lived in a posh bit and um, she wanted it done as the four seasons now the winter one I had no problem with because there was <coughs> a lovely wide range of snowy bits and all of that the one I really struggled with because I used to paint in oils back then as well was the was the summer because there's just such a wide amount of greens and I didn't understand colour mixing then. By the way, my colour mixing companion is out and available at six pounds in hard copy um, or I can email you a PDF for a fiver. But it's just understanding the colour enough because we want we want a bit of variation here. What I could do, I could put a white glaze over this background, um, which will soften both of those. Um, I, I might show you that actually, but I do need to make sure that that is dry. So this is trick number one. Let me get the hair dryer on this. Are you all still with me? Are you there, mother? Obviously, in real life, I would um, I'd be slightly more patient and let it dry. But this isn't real life, is it? Right, runny white. Not as much runny white, but what will happen... It's also slightly dirty because um, my water's filthy. And... Um, I'm just going to brush over both areas and in brushing over both areas you're in keeping the wash so it means that that background area is now doubly misty Can you see that? We've got that beautiful, lazy, hazy, crazy day of summer. It could be like today, I don't know, but I'm here in the middle of the town centre and all I've got is a rather grotty looking building in front of me um, through my window. That's seen better days. And those of you who know where the shop is will know what I'm talking about. Okay, we've got that. Then I'm going to go with a bit more yellow and a little bit of white. Um, I'm making my colours slightly more vibrant than I would um, in a normal painting because I need you to see it um, on the camera. I'm going to go with my little dinky brush. Oh, I don't think I've got time for that, V, but yes, you're correct, standing stone couple of standing stones here would look really lovely wouldn't they I might stick a path in that might be all I've got time for today because it's already quarter two isn't it so I'm going with this slightly brighter lemony green that's very opaque with the white I'm sure you're you're perfectly adept of adding some standing stones V so you're even more sparing with the opaque yellowy white. And you really want to just keep that. We're going to ignore that whole background and just keep that on the foliage. 
we want little bits of dark not too much and then I've got a lot of paint on this brush that I just need to wipe off any excess to go in here the big brush might work quite nicely but I wanted to do limit limited palette limited colors limited brushes I'm feeling very limited today but again you want to just if it feels a bit bright this is acrylics so if, if it all goes a bit wrong just add paint over a bit more black again you could put a stag over here or something couldn't you or a little badger running across I don't know I won't keep you much longer I'm sure you've got very exciting things to do Maybe something like that. I'm going to use my little thin brush. Diane, have another go. There, are you more watercolory? Because I was saying that this morning that um, if you're more watercolory, acrylics are so counterintuitive and the opposite that it can be quite hard to get your head around if you've if you've come from a watercolor background if you're more oily um acrylics are very very similar except they dry a lot quicker so do have a try now what i sometimes will do with acrylics um is i'll just do a few extra bits of green let me go a little bit darker with a thin brush and bring some of it out into the sky that doesn't really relate to any of the foliage that's on there you, you basically just want random blobs and dabs and those random blobs and dabs really help that feel of foliage do a few flicky uppy bits and then I'm gonna go slightly bluey color there add a bit more blue a little bit of red I want to make brown this time if you remember when I said if you want to darken your green um, add some red but not too much because you'll go brown I want more red to go brown because this because I'm not using burnt sienna so I want this brown naturally and I'm just gonna sort of oh I don't know let's wiggle it across Round here. And if you want to um, make it feel like there's a bit of depth and a bit of light on there, I'm going to add a bit of white. And it's the opposite side that you add your highlights because generally a path is worn maybe a bit more white I'll take a photograph of this and um, share it afterwards within the comments of this post I can't share images um, live 
um, but I can do it afterwards. And if you want a darker brown for that side, you could add more red into your dark blue. And what's great about something like this is you've got instant color harmony because all of the colors are related. So if you wanted to get extra depth within this scene, we've got lots of foliage, but we could just stick a couple of uh, wonky fence posts. Don't go right the way across and don't... Um, slice them up either have a nice broken fence and that will give us scale we know that we now know how tall these layers of foliage are because we tend to see a fence post and know it's roughly waist height um, in general so by having the fence post waist height um, it means we know how tall those trees are so a human would be double that height about a thumb width so if a human stood there an adult you can see those trees are about 20 30 feet have you found today useful um, obviously it's a very quick process to show you but it's those layers of foliage um, as well as layers of foliage so using that white glaze to give you distance in your layers so you can use the same color but also using more blue at the back, more, more greens in the front, and that contrast between the black and the yellow, adding the white into the yellow to give you slightly more opaque areas, and also for having clusters of trees. Um, with your clumps of foliage, it's the clumps of foliage that are really, really useful. Um, let me just let you know what's, what's coming up next month oh next month's quite exciting next month on the 7th of august i can't believe it's august um the free demo is painting human eyes in watercolor so that's good so that's next saturday but 24th of july 11 o'clock here will be a free class and it's uh, a free paint along session 11 till 12 30 watercolors and it's a child on the beach in wellies check to our events section and uh, you'll be able to to if you say you you're going or interested it will give you a reminder closer to the time um so 24th of july is a full paint along lesson um and then Saturday's free demo on the 7th of August is human eyes in watercolour. But it will, it'll it'll work for whether it's an animal eye. I don't know why I decided to type human. Um, this Monday, I will quickly just say, um, it's our first face-to-face -face meeting um, with our art group that used to be at Great Borton that's now in Wardington. Wardington Memorial Hall, Wardington Village Hall, 10 o'clock. Um, I will also streaming be streaming live from the group's Facebook page. So if uh, if you're a normal attendee to that, it'd be lovely to see you. It's been lovely. Try some clumpage, Sue. It's all about the clumpage. Get your acrylics out this afternoon. And there's so much you could do with this foreground. In fact, before I go totally, I'm going to just put a few poppies in this. I hope you don't mind for one sec. Um, but I think... It needs something. I'll put a tiny bit of red in my, a uh, bit of white in my cadmium red just to make it a bit more something. I know I run the risk of making it a bit more twee, but, well, we have been painting twees. Um, a bit of ultramarine for the centres. It'll look like a, a nice dark poppy centre. And interestingly, thank you, Julie. Um, if you wanted to give the idea of a section of, of poppies in the distance, 
we could you could do a little bit of a a red glaze look at that a little bit of a red glaze over that grass will give us the idea of poppies and you don't want to do you don't want to go wild with it it's so easy to go wild in the aisles but sometimes that little bit of red or a few um, white dots, which you could do with a gel pen, helps us get the season right so we know it's more summery and it breaks up the foreground. I've, I've absolutely loved um, chatting with you this morning and teaching you a few hints and tips. Um, Thank you for those of you who sent stars or PayPal donations. I really appreciate it. Times are difficult so um, for all of us. So I do appreciate those of you that um, give, uh, give donations to, to help these demos thrive. Just a little white line on that. So basically this has totally changed the look, hasn't it? Hint of red warms it up a little bit red and green are complementary opposites i'm going to shut up now and uh, let you have you let you enjoy your saturday so i'll take a photograph of this and uh, you can see it a little bit more closely um as a photograph and i'll post it underneath uh, where all your comments are now i will take a photograph of it and I'll, I'll add it to that section but thank you so so much have a wonderful weekend please look after yourselves it's still a bit weird out there um, don't get too wet or don't get too sunburnt. It is a British summer time on a weekend. It's either or both are possible. Uh, please look after yourselves and uh, hopefully I'll see you all again at some point soon. Don't forget our online shop, theartryonline.com, is open 24-7. No postage and packing charges to mainland UK and no minimum spend. Um, or you can call in Tuesday to Saturday 10 till 4 and see Jackie or me. Um, so thank you so so much i do appreciate all of your support uh take care stay safe and i'll see you all soon bye bye everybody bye bye